Two seasons ago, the Atlanta Hawks were the surprise of the NBA. The Hawks made it all the way to Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Finals behind Trey Young, who averaged 29 points per game and 9 assists over that stretch. Truthfully, if it wasn't for a misplaced referee behind Trey resulting in a bizarre foot injury, the Hawks were in the driver's seat and had a fair shot at making it to the Finals, beating the favorite Milwaukee Bucks. Coming off of that Eastern Conference Finals run into 2022, the Hawks were primed coming off of that Cinderella story type of run. The Atlanta Hawks are on for another finals run until they met their match in the Miami Heat with the fresh off of injury John Collins at their disposal while also missing Clint Capella and having an Anike Okongwu who didn't really play too much and essentially Trey Young was left with trying to be Superman. In this series this past year we saw how that turned where Trey Young was pretty much left to do everything on his own and the Heat were able to keep him boxed where he just averaged 15 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, 6 assists per game while also averaging five turnovers per game. It sort of seemed like a situation where they were just throwing everybody they could at Trey Young. Trey Young didn't have the players around him that this team was built for and he essentially fell flat. Now, as you guys already know, if you've watched my Miami Heat video, I'm going across the association, choosing the top two teams from each conferences. I'm doing an overlook of their season for this year because I want to determine what I think is their ceiling and their floor, what their record will be, and what the team will look like coming into the 2023 NBA season. Now, as always, if you're new and you find yourself liking this video, please do not hesitate to subscribe. And if you're not new, you already know what to do. Hit a like on this video so that I know you're enjoying this series and we can keep it rolling. As always, like any other video, tell me what you guys think in the comments below, how you believe the Atlanta Hawks season will go, and where do you think they will shape out in the Eastern Conference playoffs? As we all know, Trey Young and the Hawks have come very close to being on the highest stage in the association. Last year, we saw them decline in a way most of us thought wouldn't really happen, but that begs the question, what should we expect for this coming basketball season? Now, we have already seen what Trey Young can do with the healthy squad around him, reaching the Eastern Conference Finals, which, again, it took everyone by surprise, and being close to pulling off the upset against the Bucks. Now, this offseason, the Hawks have added some additions to help them across the board in DeJounte Murray, who was picked up in a trade for Danilo Gallinari, and they also signed Aaron Holiday. Another key pickup that they got with regards to their pick and roll game was Frank Kaminsky. Let's not forget that Atlanta Hawks do already have Bogdan Bogdanovich, John Collins, Clint Capella, DeAndre Hunter, and they have a nice vet in Timothy Luau Cabarro. In my opinion, adding DeJounte Murray does wonders for the Hawks on both offense and defense when Trey is off the court. But without significant contributions from DeAndre Hunter and John Collins, this team is stuck at being a pretty good playoff caliber team and not really a finals contender. What will take the Hawks from being just a pretty good team to a finals contender, it'll, it'll be a couple steps that I believe can happen. I have faith that DeAndre Hunter, he can remain consistent and take a step forward as he gains footing in the league. But what I believe will really put this team over the top will be their development of Jalen Johnson, AJ Griffin, and Anika. At this point, we know what these three guys have potential wise, but it's time to see what the Atlanta Hawks bring development wise, especially when it comes to Anike Okongwu because he's been in the league for about three to four years now. Atlanta doesn't have the most depth, but these three guys will be vital in making them achieve that next level. The Hawks have quite a bit of question marks and areas that you would like to see checked off with regards to an NBA championship contender like, can Collins contribute significantly as a team's third option? Can DeAndre Hunter find a consistent streak? And will Anike Okongwu take that step forward? Now those questions are hard questions to answer is because they're all what if. They're all questions where you have to see and wait and look how the season plays out. And more often than not, when it comes to a team like that, a question mark where you just have to see what the season plays out, it's hard calling them a championship contender. Championship contenders often have championship mentalities. They have a solidified one, two, and three scoring option. You can truly define what each player's roles are on that team. And for me, the Atlanta Hawks feels like these players, this is the year where they figure out what their roles are. And some teams, they can figure out that role during the season and then have a great run going into the playoffs. Some teams can't do that. But again, with that being said, this is a young team, so it's going to be hard to tell 
we just have to see what happens. Another important question that I've had on my mind is, can Bogdanovich stay healthy? And the most important, in my opinion, with regards to everything regarding this team, did these offseason additions truly help their defense? Now, we know DeJounte Murray is a dog defensively, but does that really help them? We know Trey Young is a pretty much an undersized guard. DeJounte Murray does add length, but does Bogdanovich take a leap defensively? Do we see Onike Akangu take an even bigger leap defensively like we know we can? Because truthfully, I could see him being in the DPOY conversation if he continues to rise like I know he can. There are a lot of factors and even luck when discussing a potential championship run. And at this point, I think the Hawks are a star away from being in that conversation with the Bucks and Celtics. However, if DeJounte Murray and Trey Young can do what I think they can do together, other players around the league may consider Atlanta as a free agency destination a year from now and essentially going there to take them over the top. As of right now, I don't see the Atlanta Hawks as a championship contender. I do see them as one of those teams in the East that you do have to look out for. And if you're not prepared for this team, they will sweep the rug from under you. And all of a sudden you see yourself down 2-1 or 3-1 in this series that they're about to upset you in. For the Atlanta Hawks, I had their ceiling set at an Eastern Conference Finals visit. I do feel like that's kind of far-fetched, but I do believe their floor is a first round playoff exit. So I do feel like they're one of those teams that they can sneak up on you and make it to the second round, but that's as far as they'll really go. If they do draw a pretty good matchup in the second round, they can potentially go to the Eastern Conference Finals. And like I said, that points to the factor of luck when we're discussing a championship run. I think the Hawks will hover around the high 30s to low 40s with regards to wins. Looking at a 41 to 42 win count as that sweet spot, and I think they're going to be at the mid to bottom of the Eastern Conference, looking at the 5-6-7 range. That's all I got for you guys regarding the Atlanta Hawks. Let me know what you think about the Atlanta Hawks in the description. Do you think they're a contender or do you think that they're a player away? I think they're a player away. To me, if the Hawks can do well enough this year, it can be an attractive free agency destination. So I do believe they're a player away, but I think they're going to have some fireworks with regards to this basketball season. As always, it is your boy TV with the greatest hoop stories and discussions on the tube, and I'm out. Peace.